In this week's show, 10 Sega Genesis and Mega Drive games where the sequel was better than the original. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Sequels have a tough time, especially if the original was a fantastic game. Making a sequel means you've got to make a game that meets the expectation of players, that pulls on those nostalgia strings. And so in today's show, we're going to be taking a look at 10 games where the originals were great, but the sequels were even better. Now you can help grow the channel by hitting that like button and sharing this video with those that love their Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And remember to drop down into the comments below and let me know about sequels that were better for originals on any console. Right, let's get on with this top 10. Populous is considered to be the first of its genre, God Games. It sees the player take control of a god who's using its divine intervention to help his or her followers thrive and annihilate the other tribes who don't follow their teachings. Gameplay focuses around primarily raising and lowing land until it's flat. Once flat, your followers can build houses. As they build houses and you level out the land, these houses merge to eventually become huge castles, increasing your population. The goal of the game is to have the largest population and dominate the land mass. As all this takes place, you earn mana that you can use to then summon a power to wreak all sorts of havoc on your enemies. Powers like earthquakes. The sequel to Populous on the Mega Drive was called Two Tribes and did not get a Sega Genesis release. Two Tribes is a classic game sequel. The core mechanics remain intact and you ultimately get more of everything you had in the first game with a few extras. In Two Tribes, navigation is overhauled with you just needing to move the mouse pointer to navigate the map. Monsters are now introduced to the world and the visuals are improved as well as adding more levels, more powers and more options. The improvements as well as more of what made Populous great makes the sequel to Populous a great game all round. Micro Machines, the classic mini car toy from the 80s and 90s, got a video game brought to us by Codemasters. It's a game series that would bankroll the company for a decade. You take control of tanks, boats, cars and choppers to race around some of the craziest tracks seen in the game. The controls, level design and graphics made this game an instant classic. It was hard to see how Codemasters could beat this hit game, but they did with their imaginatively named Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. This game took the formula of the original and turned it up to 11. The first thing you'll notice in the game is not the graphics or the tracks or even the cars, is that the cartridge has two joypad ports in it. This is because in Europe you could play eight players at once on this game. The J cart let you plug in four pads and then two players could play on each pad. It worked surprisingly well and the J-Cart was a revolution in multiplayer gaming. When it came to the game, the developers packed everything they could into it. The game went from 8 tracks to over 50. Knockouts, Super Leagues and Time Trials were added. A new on-cart save function saved lap times and achievements. Mini Micros were added and finally the number of vehicles you could control went through the roof with rally cars, helicopters, sports cars, speedboats, monster trucks and more added to the game. Micro Machines 2 is one of the most ambitious sequels on the Sega Mega Drive with not only huge improvements to the content and features but to the actual hardware itself. The best thing about Lethal Enforcers was the amazing Justifier light gun you got with the game. The peripheral was awesome, high quality plastics, an original way to add a second light gun and was well balanced. The game it came with was not so great. Whilst Lethal Enforcers was not terrible, it was considered a low effort port of the arcade classic. The digitized characters and backgrounds were poorly optimized and the gameplay was not as exciting as its arcade big brother. There was still fun to be had though and for some it was, despite its shortcomings, a solid and fun light gun game. With the bar being set relatively low, it's no wonder that its sequel would naturally be better. Again, a port from the arcade, Gunfighters got a lot more care and attention when it came to the visuals. 
there was still a significant amount of optimization, but the dithering was vastly better than the original. There was more variety in the enemies, and the level structure was vastly superior, with surprise attacks, more verticality in combat, and more variety when it came to the levels. Lethal Forces is not everybody's cup of tea, but when it comes to sequels better than the original on the Sega Mega Drive, Gunfighters is an easy choice for the list. Golden Axe is one of my all-time favourite arcade games, and to see it come to the console was a dream come true. When I was a child, it was called a beat-em-up, but with today's explosion in genre types, it's often referred to as a brawler. The game brought the fantasy world of Conan to our TV screens with swords, dragons, magic and skeletons. Its well-balanced gameplay and great visuals made it an instant classic amongst Genesis owners. The sequel knew not to mess with what wasn't broken and instead looked to double down on the formula and settled for improved sprites, better animation and swordplay, improvements to the magic system and a host of new enemies, levels and mounts. Whilst the original will still remain a favour for gamers, there's no denying that taking that classic formula and just tweaking it where it needed to be tweaked made Golden Axe 2 a better game than the original. Sonic is a game that launched a global icon. Sega's long-standing and final mascot in a long line of mascots was released in 1991 and was an instant hit with gamers. The game was genuinely one of the best platformers of its time. Visually, Sonic was stunning, with colours on screen that few thought were possible on Sega's 16-bit console. The level design and structure was superb, with multiple routes, secret areas and unique mechanics on nearly every single level. The Sonic character design was amazing and proliferated throughout all the characters, from enemies to the main villain Dr. Robotnik. Playing that first game, it was hard to see how they could top it. The game was a classic and critically well received. As a dev team, setting yourself such a high bar can be a recipe for disappointment when you have to try and top that with a sequel. But the team managed it with Sonic 2. Sonic 2 became the fastest selling game in the UK, with 750,000 sales on its first day, beating even North America with its 600,000 sales. In today's money, Sonic 2 nearly made a billion dollars in sales, and the hype around this game was justified. The team amazingly managed to squeeze even more out of the Sega Genesis with graphics that surpassed the original. New locomotion mechanics were added, making traversal more exciting, allowing for more unique elements to be added to each level. The special stages got an overhaul, with the old 2D pinball being replaced with an exciting 3D-esque racetrack. More depth was added to each level, and Dr. Robotnik's simple craft got a huge upgrade with more exciting attachments and attack sequences that even included a metal Sonic robot and a giant freaking Dr. Robotnik robot that took up the entire height of the screen. Beating the original Sonic was an impossible task, but the dev team proved that nothing is impossible with Sonic 2. Now I'm going to cheat a little with this next game. The Fantasy Star series saw three games released for the system, four if you include all the Mega Drive modem text adventures together. The first game in the series to be released on Sega's 16-bit console was Fantasy Star 2. The original game on the Master System was a masterpiece, and gamers across the world couldn't wait for the next sequel in the series. But what fans got was a game that didn't live up to expectation. There were graphical improvements, but considering how groundbreaking the visuals had been on the Master System, this sequel was a letdown. Battles were visually dull, with the same virtual reality grid background being used for every encounter. The story and character development was lackluster, and for a sequel, the game had not really moved on from the original. All was forgiven though, when Fantasy Star 3 was released. Everything got a significant upgrade, the world map looked lovely and gave the player the freedom to explore an exciting world. The location battle stages were reintroduced, dungeons and towns looked lovely and were all well designed, and narratively the game was back on par with the original. After the misstep of Fantasy Star 2, the series never looked back and went from strength to strength with each subsequent game demonstrably improving over the last, and if players thought Fantasy Star 3 was good, Wait until they got their hands on the fourth game. 
Our next games are going to split the community right down the middle. It's Streets of Rage and Streets of Rage 2. Streets of Rage was a phenomenon on Sega's console and was looked on at afar from other console gamers with envious eyes. Sega's beat-em-up had all the hallmarks of a blockbuster arcade game. At the core of Streets of Rage's success was a stunning combat system that was CQC based with grappling moves and even a special attack that saw police backup take out enemies with a massive rocket launcher. The game was extremely well balanced with some great boss fights that all had different combat patterns. The arrival of Streets of Rage 2 was one of those sequels that etched itself into the pages of gaming history. This was not just a simple sequel that improved on a few aspects, it was a complete overhaul that set the gold standard for the genre, besting even the greatest arcade beat-em-ups. It was truly astounding what they'd achieved with the game. It not only sold over 3 million copies, but it helped to sell the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive consoles as gamers clamoured to get their hands on the game. Its stunning soundtrack, huge sprites, great levels, variety of enemies and improved combat system was in every way an improvement over the original. But we still need to acknowledge that many gamers still cite the purity of the original as an argument for why the original may be better than the sequel. What do you think? In Europe, Sega Mega Drive fans had way more compilations than any other territory. Compilations bundled several games together at a budget price. One of these compilations was the Mega Game series. This compilation was made up of three first party Sega games. The first compilation, Mega Games 1, had some okay games on the cart. Super Hang On, World Cup Italia 90 and Columns. The selection wasn't too bad for the price this cart sold at, but if this was your Christmas gift, you may be a little underwhelmed by the selection of games. If Mega Games 1 was a bit meh, Mega Games 2 was a home run. The sequel in this budget series had anything but meh games. Mega Games 2 packed in three smash hit games with The Revenge of Shinobi, Streets of Rage and Golden Axe. Three of the best beat-em-ups on the system at the time were included on a single budget card and was one of the best compilations that Sega ever released on the console. Rocket Knight Adventures has a very special place in the hearts of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive owners. It's a beautifully crafted game with some lovely visuals, solid and unique traversal mechanics, nice combat and a charming universe. It's one of the best Kyan Army exclusives released for the console and remains a fan favourite to this day. However, its sequel Sparkster is not well known amongst fans of the game and the console. The game for some reason had a limited release compared to the original and in today's market commands a significant price if you want to own the original copy of the game. As far as sequels goes, it's overhauled its gameplay of the original with a more well-rounded combat system. The levels were significantly more complex with actual platforming elements and gating mechanics within the level, which was an improvement over the original's restrictive platform design. The game also introduced more variety into its level mechanics with a full horizontal shmup level, auto-scrolling levels, simple puzzles, as well as more verticality that fully utilised Sparkta's rocket pack. Whilst not well known, this is a sequel that improves on the original and takes the series forward. Our final game didn't just get a great sequel on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, it was an outstanding sequel for every single platform it was brought to. Mortal Kombat on the Mega Drive may not have been the best conversion when it came to visuals, but the brutality and combat gameplay was outstanding and some of the best outside of the arcade original. The game brought with it all the fanfare of the arcade right into the living room of Sega's 16-bit console owners. It was an instant hit on the console, ensuring that any sequel in the arcade would be guaranteed a release on the Mega Drive. And just one year later, Mortal Kombat 2 arrived. The game kept what people loved about the original and upped the brutality. MK2 improved its combat and combo system. Visuals were overhauled whilst keeping the iconic look. Fatalities now included transformations, as well as friendship finishing moves. The roster of characters increased with old favourites getting new looks and the environments were even more ambitious than the original. 
Sega's port was a solid addition to the series and a sequel that went above and beyond the original. So there are my 10 game sequels that were better than the original on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Now, the Mega Drive and Genesis has a huge catalogue of games and there are plenty of sequels out there. So make sure you drop down in the comments below and let me know about games that you think had a better sequel than the original. And don't just keep it for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, any game that had a better sequel than the original. Make sure you stick it down in the comments below. Now, if you've enjoyed this show, if you love retro gaming, you love the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little icon just below this video. We put out brand new videos every single Monday, and so that you never miss it, make sure you hit the little bell below the video as well. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.